Hey guys, good morning. Dan with Ledger Support here. In this video today, I'll show you how to use the Ledger extension. Let's do it. So Ledger extension is this really new, cool mobile product that was just released yesterday. And we have extensive documentation about uh, the product. So you just need to go to the help center support.ledger.com and read the FAQ here. But just a few highlights. What is Ledger extension? It's a multi-chain browser extension that allows you to connect directly to NFT marketplaces and dApps using your Nano X and also warns you about malicious and suspicious websites and web uh, smart contracts before signing transactions. So if there is anything fishy with the transaction, if it's about to steal your NFTs, then uh, it will warn you, which is really, really cool. And it will make you feel so safe when you transact on the internet. More things to highlight here. For now, Ledger extension is only compatible with Safari on mobile iOS 16 plus and macOS 12 plus with Safari 16 plus. Okay. Support for additional browser such as Chrome, Brave and Firefox and desktop is on the way, but not really yet, but that should be coming your way at some point. Now, um, second important thing is that for now, only the Ledger Nano X is compatible with Ledger extension. Uh, thanks to the Bluetooth feature, but uh, Ledger Stacks and Nano S Plus will be um, released later and you'll be able to connect Stacks via Bluetooth and the Ledger Nano S Plus by using the cable. The last thing to mention here is the list of dApps that have integrated with Ledger extension is currently kind of small. Uh, so there's only OpenSea, PancakeSwap, Curve, Zapper, Manifold and Revoke.cash, but of course we are currently working with a lot more uh, dApps and teams uh, across Web3 just to make sure Ledger extension will be available in all those services. So this is super cool and really exciting. So I'm in the App Store and the first thing I want to do, of course, is to download the Ledger extension on my phone. So I'm going to go ahead and do just that. All right, folks, so this is the home screen of the Ledger extension. I'm going to go ahead and tap how to enable it and go through all the different steps here. So step number one is to install the Ledger extension app, which I've already done. So I'm going to ignore that one. Step number two is to enable the extension. So I want to go into the settings here at the top and tap manage extensions and activate Ledger extension and tap done. All right, and you can see here now a Ledger extension tab is appearing in the settings here. Um, so the next step is to allow permissions. So I'm going to go back into the menu, tap Ledger extension, and I'm going to select always allow. All right, guys, so now is the moment where I'm going to connect my Ledger Nano X via Bluetooth to the extension, all right? So before I do that, I just want to make sure to go in the control center. So I'm going to hold both buttons and verify that Bluetooth is enabled on the device. If it says not enabled, then make sure to, you know, enable it using both buttons like that. So I want it to be enabled. I also want to make note of uh, my Nano X name. OK, so it's 9E6B. This information will help me connect my larger device to the extension and will be very useful when I try to connect multiple devices as well. Uh, I'll show you that a little later. Okay, and next, very, very important, make sure to exit the control center. Don't stay on the control center, otherwise the device might have difficulties connecting to the extension. So you wanna go back to the dashboard. Also make sure that you're not inside an app like that, okay? You just wanna make sure to go back to the neutral position, which is just the, the, the dashboard. So let's do it. Let's connect the device. Uh, I'm going to click connect. It's prompting me to swipe up. So let's do that. Here it's detecting two larger devices, right? Because I've got a second Nano X device with me here. But I'm going to go ahead and select this device. So that would be the top one here. Now it's asking me to open the Ethereum app. So let's do just that. And I'm getting a prompt to connect. So let's push the button. Beautiful. It says connected successfully. Click done. It looks like I'm all set. And you can see there is a little L widget here, which is the extension. So I can actually tap it to see my 
ledger accounts and I can select my nano. And this is the screen where you can actually add, add a second device if you want to. So I'm going to actually do this and show you how it works. So I've got my second device here. Um, I'm going to tap add device. It's looking for existing Nano X's around. So this device here is um, 2552. So I'm going to select it. Okay, this is working perfectly. And I am able now to connect the accounts. Great. You see, I've got two devices connected to uh, the extension now, and I'll be able to toggle between one device and the other uh, just from the app. See, like I can select this account or that account. Now I'm going to stay on this account here, this device, and now I'm gonna go ahead and attempt uh, to list one of my NFTs using OpenSea. So let me open a second tab. I'm going to keep this tab open just in case. And I'm gonna go ahead to OpenSea here and attempt to connect my wallet. Select Ledger. Here, make sure the Ethereum app is still open on your device. Okay, so that's the correct account. Excellent, it says connected successfully, tap done. Okay, so I am in my OpenSea account. I'm gonna attempt to list one of my NFTs here. I'm okay, sell, so a complete listing. Great, cool, so I'm getting a prompt from the extension, so this is excellent, excellent. Swipe up. Uh, it, it just basically did a transaction simulation just to make sure that I'm not signing anything malicious or something that could uh, steal my fund. So this is a, one of the features that I really, really like. Uh, it's also giving me the warning that uh, this DAP, so OpenSea, will be able to transfer every NFT for uh, your own from this collection. Make sure you trust it. This is normal. This is just how OpenSea works. You need to give the smart contract access to your collections to be able to list them for sales. So there's nothing suspicious here. I can go ahead and continue. And uh, here I'll tap approve here. I'm prompted to select the transaction fee. I'm gonna go for the fast transaction fee. And now I'm going to review the transaction on my ledger device. See, I'm getting the prompt here. Everything is clear signed, so you know exactly what you're doing, which is great. So it's an allowance, I'm allowing, um, this collection, it uh, displays the name of the collection, which is also really, really cool. The smart contract address of the, the Genesis Pass and the fee. So it looks all good for me. I'm going to go ahead and, and accept that and wait for the transaction to confirm on the Ethereum blockchain. Now it looks like it's complete. I'm going to select done here. And the second part of this transaction is to actually sign the listing order. So I'm going to go ahead and tap sign and sign this message on my ledger device. This one is not clear signed yet, but it should be in the future as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I can also verify, you know, on the device that I'm looking at the same thing and I'm signing the same message. And if all looks good, select sign. Perfect. It confirms that my item has been listed. It's all working as expected. Very, very sweet. Okay, so this is so much fun. Now I'm going to attempt a swap using PancakeSwap. So I'm on the PancakeSwap app here. I'm going to select Connect, Ledger, and same as before, I'm also getting a prompt to connect. And the, you can see the, the widget appears in the app here. So it's all working perfectly. Let's attempt a trade. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap half map balance for USDT. Before I do that though, I just wanna make sure that blind signing is enabled in the settings of the app um, because I'm gonna be using a smart contract to do the swap. So if blind signing is not enabled, I'm gonna get 
an error message uh, on the app. So it says it's enabled. If for you it says disabled, then use both buttons to enable it. And then go back to the dashboard of the app. Okay, now I'm ready to swap, so let's do this. Swap, confirm swap. Waiting for the prompt on my device, swipe up. So again, this is really, really cool. I'm getting a transaction simulation and I know exactly what's gonna happen. So I'm sending some ETH and getting back some Tether. This is excellent, excellent. Uh, continue. Transaction fee, I'm gonna select fast, that's fine. And now I'm going to review the transaction on the device here. It's blind signing, of course, so, you know, I have to trust what I'm doing here, but I've used PancakeSwap before, so it's all good for me. And I'm gonna go ahead and accept the transaction. Here, I'm getting a transfer uh, progress bar here. So I just have to wait for the transaction to confirm on the ACM network. And it looks like it's done. Excellent. And I'm getting the transaction received in the app and I can close this. Okay. So look, my honest assessment of this product is that it works super well. The onboarding was easy. I had no connection issues whatsoever. Everything worked as intended. So this is really, really cool. I think you guys are gonna have a blast using the Ledger extension. And I just can't wait for more dApps to integrate the Ledger extension so you can use it uh, on mobile, on the go with your Nano X and just have this awesome mobile experience. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions or comments, just drop them in the comment section uh, under the video. Uh, and again, you can reach out to us if you have any issues getting started with the Ledger extension. Uh, you can send us a ticket at support.ledger.com. That's support.ledger.com. In the meantime, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.